Sound Mind and Body is supported by My Body Tutor. Lose weight, look great, and get the confidence you deserve with your own weight loss coach that will help you stick to your weight loss plan by providing daily and personal accountability like no other service in the world. For $50 off your first month, mention Sound Mind and Body when calling 516-456-6248 or by visiting mybodytutor.com. Sound Mind and Body is also brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Hello and welcome to Sound Mind and Body, a podcast where we interview inspiring people about the many different ways to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo-woo. Today, we're going to give you a little practical woo-woo. We'll be talking about a very important part of being of sound mind and body, and that is money and finances. My guest today is Lisa Gould. She is a certified financial counselor who does individual and couples coaching, workshops, small business consulting, and financial interventions. Specializing in working with fluctuating income streams, she expertly blends the best of traditional and long-established money management tools and ideas and processes for entrepreneurs, business owners, and creative professionals. Lisa revolutionizes her clients' beliefs and behaviors around money, finances, and relationships. She provides a fresh, modern approach to the possibilities of money. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Welcome to the podcast, Lisa Gould. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, let me just start this by saying that I have been working with you for the past couple months, yes. and I am so happy. That was one of the best decisions I've made in the past few months. Yay. Um, and what attracted me was when, you know, I had been referred to you through the whole, you know, um, AG group, the Andrea Quinn's group, which mm-hmm. you have been a part of. And somebody kept telling me, you, you need to hire Lisa, you need to hire Lisa. And so I went to your website and your quote, your, your slogan on your website had me at hello. It was, <laughs> your slogan is getting by is not. Yes. So let's talk about that a little bit and how you came to that and what what is your whole philosophy? Okay. We tend to believe, particularly people who are self-employed and have a fluctuating income, tend to believe that as long as they're kind of getting by, they're paying their bills, they're, um, and sometimes not in every case paying their bills, but they're able to stay afloat just a little bit. In that, you believe that you're doing okay you're getting by month to month. And on a short term basis, that can work. If you're just getting started in a business, or if you're changing careers, or if you run into a big life circumstance, like a health condition, or, you know, a car accident, anything that kind of puts you over the edge, you can get by. You can get by for a few months. But there are a lot of people, and I was one of them, uh, who get by for a lifetime. It's the habit. And they're not putting money away for emergencies. They're not putting money away for a safety net. They're not putting money away for their future self, 80-year-old Lisa, as I like to call my account. (laughs) And uh, they're not really taking care of themselves in the way that they think that they are. It's a It's a false sense of security. And so I try to wake people up from that and get them out of that and go, whoa, you know, you're not where you think you are and you're going to run into a problem sooner or later. So let's set up uh, stop gaps so that you don't run into that problem ever. Right. And you think, okay, yeah, you know, that makes sense. But how is it any different than, you know, I can do that on my own. You, you know this stuff, but unless you, I know from personal experience working with you, th- that unless you are accountable to somebody or I don't know what it is, the magic of having somebody else tell you or coach you makes you 
like really look at it differently, I think. And so let's talk a little bit about you're not a financial planner. No, you're a financial counselor or coach. Yes. So what's the difference between those two? A financial planner tells you you go to a financial planner with a certain amount of money, or you say you're going to start contributing a certain amount of money, and they tell you where to invest. They tell you based on your needs, your wants, your age, your lifestyle, your risk assessment. They tell you what where to put your money for uh, hopefully in your best interest. Some of them do it in their own best interest, but that's another topic. Right. I don't I never tell people what to invest in. I might say start a retirement account or I might say um, you know, you need to set aside money for this thing that you want to do. But I don't tell them what to do with that money beyond keep this much liquid and keep this much. Uh, you can invest this much. Um, but what I do do is I work with them to in- maximize their cash flow. So when people get money, they tend to react they get money. I got my paycheck today. So I paid my visa and I bought some groceries and I, you know, maybe even put a little money in the bank, you know, but it's a very reactive thing. Mm -hmm. And I like to say that I take people from the rearview mirror to the windshield. So they take a look at what's coming in and they say, what do I want to do with this money before it even comes in? And then you can say, okay, I make X amount of dollars, say 10000 just because I can do the math in my head very easily. <laughs> um, so I make $10,000 a month, and I want to, you know, go to – on a trip to Italy in a year, I need to set aside X amount. Mm-hmm. What, what people do who are getting by is they're spending all of that money every single month, and then when the trip to Italy comes, they put it on the credit card. Right. And in some cases, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to borrow money to travel, be my guest. I don't, I, that's the other thing. The other thing is that I don't tell people – if they say, look, I took the grocery money and I bought a pair of Prada shoes, <laughs> I say – okay, well, we're going to have to figure out a different way for you to feed your children. You know, (laughs) there's no shame. And, you know, we'll talk about the no shame zone, but there's really no shame in what people want. And I don't judge them for it because we all want different things. I have have clients who use, you know, make a really nice salary and use ripped towels in their home because (laughs) they like to spend the summer in New York City or in Italy or in England every single year. And it's like, they're fine with ripped towels. They don't care. See, I need to have nice towels. I, I like nice towels. I know, right? It's like one of those. So it, that's what you do. You help. Let's talk about, you know, let's talk about what is your financial reality? What do you want? Yes. What do you want to create? And, you know, I know from our first, was it our first? No, we first met in person. And so yes. that was like, it was scary for me. It's like you feel like you're, you know, standing naked in front of somebody. Yeah. And, you know, but you do have what you call the no shame zone. Yes. No shame. No. You're just, you want to help, you yeah. know, and, but it is very difficult for people to reveal their financial, you know, secrets, I guess. It's, it's the financials. How am I managing my money? You know, people will talk about their sex life before they will tell you about their money. It's really <laughs> true. And it, it they just don't want to talk about it. But what I realized is whatever they've done, I've probably done worse. I woke up one day and found myself in $210,000 in unsecured debt. Oh my gosh. And I was making about $30,000 take home. What? How the hell yeah. did you do that? Yeah, yeah you said you Oh, were- it took skill. It took skill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were the, the self-proclaimed balance transfer queen. Yep. yep. So how did you – now, so you were not a financial counselor at that time. No, I was a mortgage broker at that time. Okay. Um, a job I never liked. And one of my really core beliefs is that if you make money doing something that you don't enjoy, you will find a way to separate yourself from that money. Oh, you might give it you might do something good with it. You might donate it or give it to a family member who needs help or spend it on good things like a roof or, you know, new wallpaper, new painting, whatever. But you're not going to have it in your possession for very long if you don't like the way you're making it. Oh, interesting. And I did not enjoy what I was doing, Mm -hmm. but it was 
uh, it was a time in our country where, as my boss used to say, we were picking up gold bricks off the street. Yeah. And the money was easy. And I still couldn't keep it together because I didn't know how to manage it. I didn't know how to manage cash flow. And so I woke up, a few things happened on the exterior, which are really to me not that important because what happened was all an inside job. Mm -hmm. I really truly believe that. But the few things that did happen on the exterior were that the uh, real estate market crashed. The company that I worked for was sold. They reduced our commissions, and they took us from 1099 to W-2. Okay. So this combination was like, this is not a situation I can handle. And I went on a trip. This is The, the reason that I call myself a balance transfer queen <laughs> is because basically someone at a credit card company all but said that to me. Oh, really? Yeah. I went on a weekend trip and I was with my sisters. We were doing like a girl's weekend at a spa. And the front desk called and they said, hey, you know, your credit card, you know, you need to come down with a different credit card. Now, I was never, ever late on anything. Uh -huh. I knew every balance. Right. I knew every interest rate. I knew what was going where, when. I was flipping them like, yeah. you know, pancakes. And <laughs> I was just like, okay. This is weird because I know that I have a, a whatever my credit limit was on this card and they're telling me whatever. So I call the credit company and they're like, no, you don't have that high a credit limit. And I was a little bit stunned because this was my um, this was my superpower. Yeah. Like I knew how to keep all these b balls in the air, even though I was way underwater. Wow. I knew how to I knew yes. how to manage that much. Right. So um, I got home. And I went to bed that night and I tossed and turned like I have never tossed and turned. And I woke up about four in the morning and I was like, all right, I just got to go figure out what's going on with my, my money. And I started making some calls about a credit card that I had accidentally paid like $40 less than the minimum. And right. I can't remember why. I think the interest rate went up or something like that. And I, it was on an automatic payment. And they told me, if you pay it, we will reinstate your teaser rate. Uh -huh. And so I called and I said, you know, you guys need to reinstate my teaser rate. And, and the guy said, I'm, we're not going to do it. And I said, no, you don't understand. You asked me to make a payment and, and you said that you would reinstate my teaser rate. And my teaser rate was, uh, my non-teaser rate was 30%, 29.99. So, um, so we, so I had this argument with him, and so I go up to the supervisor, and I'm like on this call, and so finally he said, "Look, you deserve." He said, "I see in my notes we told you we would do this, and we're not going to." Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Judgment. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, I, I don't understand. He said, "Well, you know what? We do owe you an explanation as to why," and he said, "It's obvious to us that you transfer balances all the time." And because of that, if you make one mistake, we will never fix your mistake because you're just moving money oh. around. You're never paying it down. And so in my mind, actually, a friend of mine, when I told her the story, said, you're like a balance transfer queen. <laughs> and I was like, you know what I was? I had this perfect little house of cards. And this guy just went and pulled <gasps> the bottom card out. Oh and my gosh. everything came crashing down. So I sat down and I ran my numbers. And I found out it was 210000 Oh, my goodness. And I really had no idea that yeah. it was that. Because it was spread out over several cards. And right. One was even a, a, um, a, a, like a larger loan. But it just I just had no idea. And so I just freaked out. And probably had as – well, definitely had as close to what I would call a nervous breakdown as I ever want to get. Yeah. Um, I cried for like three days. Didn't leave the house started very slowly telling people what was going on. Yeah, because it's embarrassing. Oh, my God. It was so embarrassing. And that's why I have the no shame zone, because I know <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> and a few friends kind of talked me off the ledge. Yeah. Our, oh our mutual friend, Andrea, took me to – I'm still bitter that they closed this, but Jerry's Deli across from Cedar sinai oh. used to be there. And she took me there, and I could barely even eat a, a – tablespoonful of soup. I just thought oh. I was going to die. I thought this is the end of my life. How did I get to, I was like in my early 40s. And it was like, how did I get to this place? What What does everybody else know that I don't know? Because yeah. there's clearly something, you know? Right, right. And I, from there, 
went over a bunch of different options. My solution was bankruptcy, which I don't think is a bad thing all the time. Mm -hmm. I had, I, I said to myself, look, you can spend literally the rest of your life paying this off and then you're going to be of retirement age and then you're not going to have any any way to support yourself and then you're going to have to like live with a niece or live with a nephew or you know what I mean yeah rely on the kindness of others and so I said all right this is what I'm going to do I'm going to do it because I need to and it was the best day of my life because it was wow. the day the day I decided was the best day of my life because it was the day I took control. Right. I had no control and right. I had no way to get out of um, what I was in. It always goes to that, what you say too, you always, you have choice. Yes. You have a choice. Yes. And you either are bankrupt or you're not. Filing is a different decision, but I was bankrupt. Yeah. You know? Right, and right. It, it's a tough thing to go through. I mean, like... My, you know, the way that I grew up, like nobody did that. Nobody even got divorced, you know? It was just this like bucolic 50s and 60s, well, 60s, but just this, you know, like everything was all okay. And my parents were um, depression babies. Oh. And they were much, they were a little bit older, like than most of my friends' parents, a lot actually. And so they were, um, you know, very, very good with money. Yeah. Very good. And I did not inherit the gene. <laughs> So what can I tell you? And then, so did you, when did you decide to become a financial co counselor? Well, and right how did that happen? Right after that, because about six, maybe six months later, I, but the whole time that I was going through this, I thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this mortgage thing anymore. And that's when I realized that I was separating myself from more money than I had ever made in my entire life. Um, and I was still separating myself from it. I was still, right. and you know, I had nothing to show for it, by the way. Like, I did not have a fancy house or a fancy car or fancy shoes or a fancy purse. I oh had gosh. nothing to show for it. It was partly a um, under-earning and partly just not managing well, thinking yeah. that I could go to dinner with my friends three times a week and spend $100 when I really couldn't, wow. you know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So whatever somebody's done, I'm like, okay, you know? So did you did you get, um, did you go to a, a school and get certified? I or? did. Yeah, I did. The Financial Recovery Institute is run by Karen McCall. Um, okay. She's got a lot of books out there on financial recovery. And she runs... I. I don't, they run it a little differently now. I think it's more of a one-on-one -on -one thing, but they were doing group classes that lasted a year. We would meet once a week for several hours. And I really learned from her how to do this, but I'll tell you the real education is when you start working with people. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And listening to what they're not telling you. That is, that's the, um, the superpower that I have now transferred into, is that when somebody's talking to me, <laughs> I know what they're not saying. I know what's underneath what they're saying. And I can translate that into help for them, suggestions. Everything I tell my clients is a suggestion. I don't, um, I don't tell them to do anything. I love this, and we will get into this a little bit more. We're going to take an ad break right now. When we come back, we're going to talk about how our listeners can start reviewing their financial health. Great. Hey, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound, Mind, and Body. Just the fact that you're listening to the Sound, Mind, and Body podcast tells us that you enjoy consuming your content through your ears. Now, if you're a podcast listener, you're a perfect fit to enjoy audiobooks. So for you, our listeners and official members of Sheila's Woo Woo community, Audible is offering you a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to check out their awesome service. Give it a shot. You've got nothing to lose. It's absolutely free for 30 days, and you get a free audiobook to keep even if you don't continue with the subscription. Support Sound, Mind, and Body by visiting audibletrial.com slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com slash inbound. We'll include a link in the show notes or just click the Audible banner at soundmindbodypodcast.com. Hey everyone, Sheila here to tell you about a very special offer from My Body Tutor, a weight loss program that is 100% guaranteed. Yes, you heard that right, 100% guaranteed. I interviewed Adam Gilbert, founder of My Body Tutor, on episode 19, and I was so impressed with this program that I asked Adam how we could work together, and he is now offering our listeners 
$50 off the first month. Plus, he offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose except some of that stubborn weight. And you know you want to lose those few pounds, right? I certainly did. I signed up, and after one week, I lost two pounds. I'm so excited. So try it. Go to mybodytutor.com and sign up. Tell them Sound Mind and Body referred you, and you will immediately be credited $50. Or go to the show notes on this podcast, and the link will be there. And it's also on my website, soundmindbodypodcast.com. Let me know if you're signing up. We'll do this together. Mybodytutor.com. On the next episode of Sound, Mind, and Body, our guest is TV writer, producer, and co-host of the podcast Happier in Hollywood, Sarah Fain. It's like the biggest decision you've made in your whole life, (laughs) right? But you're basically just going online, and there are all sorts of different cryobanks, um, which is sperm bank, and so you pick the one that you want to work with. It sounds sort of frivolous, but you get a really a lot of information. I have um, childhood pictures. I have oh, wow. like an audio recording. Yeah, so you basically just pick online and then wow. you can have, it's kind of odd, you can have sperm shipped to you <laughs> in a big nitrogen tank. In, oh, wow. in my case, the cryobank was near my doctor, so I just went and picked it up, the big nitrogen tank, and <laughs> buckled it into the passenger seat of my car. Oh my God. <laughs> It's not romantic. It's I will not say romantic. that. Oh my god! And then you just, you know, you're like walking into the doctor with this big silver nitrogen tank. Like, hey, everybody! Um, yeah, I was walking down Olympic Boulevard. I at one point with like a big nitrogen tank of sperm. That's next week on Sound Mind and Body. Okay, we're back and we are talking to financial counselor Lisa Gould. So before the ad break, we were talking about what people don't say. And that's the most the the most important thing that you get out of Mm -hmm. coaching people. So what are some examples of that? Well, someone will call me and let's say we start a first session and I and I say, Okay, so talk to me what's going on? What prompted you to start this work? Um, and they'll start giving me a very surfacey answer, like I don't make enough money. I don't know why I can't get a better job. I am an under earner, um, and I can't get a better job because there's too much competition or something like that. And I will then research a little bit into their history. I always ask people about money when they were growing up because our first memories around money really fuel us for the rest of our lives because money's energy and that energy once they see what that energy is if they see it in a negative way um, for example if you're the poorest kid in a rich school or even the richest kid in a Mm -hmm. poor school it can be really uh, money can be a very uncomfortable thing so I will say rather than the external thing that you're telling me there's too much competition in your field And I'll get, I'll talk to them and pretty soon I'll start to hear what it really is. It's Mm -hmm. a lack of confidence. It is a fear. It is a, um, uh, they really don't want that line of work. You know, they're doing it because their father was a doctor and, you know, they decided to be a doctor or whatever. Yeah. It's just, it's not their thing. So there are, but you, you listen to the little hints that come through and then you're able to, um, kind of cut right to the chase. I'm not a person who's very fluffy, you know, yeah, like right. I don't, I don't embellish a lot and sugarcoat. I will be gentle because I do understand that how fragile people are if they're in, if they're in a crisis. And, and I yeah. will say that not, not all my clients come to me in crisis, right? Many of them come to me and say, look, I make tons of money and I never have anything to show for it. And they just want to learn how to save more. They just want to learn how to put more money away. They want to figure out where their money's going. And I help them with that. So not everyone is in a crisis like I was and like a few of my clients. Like say I was. <laughs> well, you know, with the first yeah. time. Okay, so the first time we met, it was it was like standing naked. But then the second time, because we, we do like remote, you know, on Zoom now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and we looked at my QuickBooks, 
And I felt really like, oh my God, I was just like, it was very emotionally distressing <laughs> for me. Yeah. And to the point where the next day you were texting me, are you okay? Yeah. I'm thinking about you. Well, this is why people don't look at their books, whether or not they're on QuickBooks yeah. or whether or not they're on a, a legal pad and a pencil. They don't look at it because it is so stressful for them that they don't realize that the stress that's going to come from not looking at them is going to be significantly worse than the stress that's going to come from looking at them. Yeah, well, I can just say that since I've been working with you, we I've definitely improved in in certain things, you know, I still have mm-hmm. a long way to go. But one of the things which is so, you know, simple is just pay myself. Yeah, you know, which is just and this is for small business owners. Um, I was paying myself last. I wasn't paying myself, uh, you know, like along with everybody else. Yeah. And that is something that you've helped me to do. And it's just like, oh, my God, this feels good. This makes me feel like doing all this work that that has to go along with this job. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So that was a an energetic thing. And it was like a, an emotional thing. And, and so talk to us about the and what you say, clarity is power. Yeah. Once you are clear, and you do take a look at it, you feel a little more in control, like you did, and you're more powerful and how I have felt. And what is the money fog? Let's talk about that. Well, yeah the the clarity um, the clarity is power because if if we are going to keep on with the analogy of driving, if you have a, a dirty windshield, you can't really drive very well. You can't see. You clear the windshield so that you can see. And the same thing with the money fog. The money fog is the middle ground. It is not the person who has you know, a foot and a half of bills stacked up on their kitchen counter who never opens their mail, who is ready to be evicted out of their house, who, you know, has been 12 months late on everything that they've ever had. That's a different person. Right. Then there's the person who looks at everything, makes sure everything's perfect and spends their money wisely and always saves and puts away for the future. That's the other end of the spectrum. In the middle are the people who are like in the money fog. You'll ask somebody in the money fog how much they make and they won't know. (laughs) When I was a mortgage broker, I was stunned at this because I would say, I get where you don't know all your debts, but how do you not know how? And these were salaried people. This wasn't like a self-employed situation. Oh, Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm like, you don't know how much money you make? Well, it's going to be hard for me to get you a mortgage, but (laughs) yeah. Um, so wow. the, uh, the, the fog is comfortable. Think about being yeah. in a cabin and there's a fireplace and there's a big <laughs> fog outside and you're wrapped in a blanket and you've got a little, you know, hot toddy with you and you're just like, you're happy. You're in the fog. The fog is when you go out and you buy things that you can't afford because you're so happy. Right. <laughs> Cause you don't know. You don't know. You know, kind of what you make and you know, kind of what you spend and, yeah, I'm okay. I'm getting yeah. by. Right. And that's when you get yourself into trouble because it's just a little bit foggy. It's not a brick wall you yes, know, yes. that you're not looking at. It's just, oh, yeah. Okay. I think I make like 80000 a year. And I would be like, oh, my gosh. That's stunning. Well, and, and then on the other spectrum, because I definitely was in the money fog for a while. Mm-hmm. And, and also, it's just the fluctuating income and the, you know, small business and all that. But um, it, it's... Talk a little bit about the positive end of being out of that money fog. Like, you're not saying that you have to live like a hermit and, you know, and, you know, like not ever buy anything for yourself. But the energetic uh, thing that we talked about Mm -hmm. was what makes you feel good and be very aware of these little, maybe a little thing that makes you feel happy, Mm -hmm. makes you feel good. Maybe that like you talked about your coffee mug that you absolutely love and it just makes you happy every morning. Yeah. You know, and I have a nice coffee mug that I use too and it makes me happy. And it's, you don't have to like spend a ton of money and have, and be aware of these little things in your life and being grateful, right? For those things. It is so much of it is about gratitude for what you have and having what you want. So getting rid of the things that you don't really want in your life, whether they be people or items, you, you know, to kind of clear your space and create room for new things to come in is very important. 
I'll tell you, when I first started doing this work, I'm I'm a numbers girl. Like I was a mortgage broker. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I can do crazy math things in my head. And my friends tease me about it. And some of my clients tease me about it. But I was really about like, look, it's about the numbers. It's about the numbers. And what I've learned over the last 10 years is that it is about the numbers for sure. You have to look at the numbers. There's no question. But creating space in your life for new things to come in and really taking a look at what you want I call it kind of a form of precisionism. I I don't like the word perfectionism because it's it doesn't exist. Right. But you can be very precise. You if you're precise with what you want to get out of a vacation, and you think that that's going to be in Tahiti, and you get very precise about what it is that you want. Well, I want to lie on the beach. Okay. I want to be served fancy drinks. Okay. I want to be in a nice hotel. Okay. So now if you're, say, living in Los Angeles, you've got Laguna, San Diego, Ojai, Malibu. You could even go further. You know, you could Mm -hmm. do any of that without flying to Tahiti. True. If that's what you want. So let's get precise about it. Now you might say, that's not what I want. I want to go to Tahiti. Okay, great. So then where are you willing to not spend money if you have a limited amount, which technically everybody has a limited amount, but some more than others. If you have a limited amount of money coming in, are you willing to give up your daily Starbucks? Are you willing to, which I'm not, by the way, just for the record, (laughs) I am not giving up my Starbucks. And are you willing to not go out to eat as much? Are you willing to buy only the sales when you're looking for clothing or shoes or whatever? You know, it depends on taking a step back and saying, what do I want my life to live, what yeah. look like? Most people think that when they start this work that they're going to just be miserable. I'm going to tell them they can't go out to eat, they can't go to movies, they got to use Netflix only and you know have a miserable existence. And the reality is that they're so much happier because A, the stress of the money is gone. That's mm-hmm. part of it. But the other thing is that they have now chosen the things that they want. Right. My, my fiance and I have a really expensive espresso maker and we've given up other things to have this because we're coffee addicts and you love it every day and we love it every day and we use it every day and it's just it's what we want and we look at it and we're like yeah that was a good purchase you know it makes you feel good it makes us feel good and I work out of the house a lot because I work on the phone so you know I want it there and, and it's it's, it's also, you know, on that same note, just putting, you know, money aside, like putting that, if it, even if it's just, you told me, to, I don't care if it's $20, just put it in a savings. Yeah. It's that energetic, you're telling the universe that you are going to be there for you. Yes, that's it. It's showing up for yourself. And, and it, I started, I started on that and then I got off track. But yes, the, um, the when I started, said that when I started, I was the numbers girl. I thought it was all about numbers until I would say to somebody, because this is what I learned, like, just take $5 and put it into an account. Take 25 like for people that were seriously trying to make rent that level. And for other people, I'd say put a couple of hundred away, whatever. Just put something away for yourself. Well, I don't have it. Just, you're not going to miss five bucks, 25 bucks. And then they'd call me the next day. Oh my God, I just got a call. I got six weeks on a show, blah, blah, blah. Right. Or I got, you know, I just got a job or I just got a a check in the mail that I forgot that, you know, somebody owed me $2,000 from 10 years ago and they just paid me, you know, things yeah. just started coming in. And I was like, Oh, okay, that was a coincidence. Okay, that was a coincidence. Okay, that one was re- and then I just couldn't anymore. It, I just, just couldn't write it off as coincidence. It's anymore. the energetic part of it. Yes, you know, it is. So you have on your website, you have some tools for people to start taking a look, you have one of uh, the eight questions to ask yourself. So these are great things. If you want to go to it's it's Lisa Gould.com. Yes. G O U L D. And we'll have this in the show notes. Um, so what are some of those questions? Well, one of the biggest things that that people come to me is that they earn a really good income and they have no idea where it goes. And a lot of that is because when you ask somebody what their monthly expenses are, they will tell you a very specific list of things. They've got their rent or mortgage. They've got their car payment, gas, groceries, food. Uh, well, I said food, dining out, clothing, phone, phone, internet. Yeah. Yeah. Internet, maybe some insurance, maybe Netflix, you know, all mm-hmm. of that. And they forget. 
there are so many other things. Right. There's, we went over this. She's like, what about this? And what yeah. about that? And what I'm like, oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, people don't account for things like gift giving, vacations, um, insurances that they, you know, they might count their car insurance and their health insurance, but they forget that they have renter's insurance and maybe they have an umbrella policy. You know, they forget that they have these things that cost them money because they don't necessarily have to pay them every month. Every single month. They yeah. have, you know, a deductible on their car. They have a deductible on their health. They have prescription meds. There are, biz you know, do you need to a buy bazillion. a room of paper, a ream of paper for your home printer? Yeah. It's small things, but they do add up. Right, right. So give me an example of a question that is on there. It, like on these questions, you're saying, if you answered yes to one question, call me in a couple weeks. If you answered yes to two questions, call me by Friday. And if you answered yes to three or more, what are you doing reading this? And right. why are we not on, on the, the phone, phone already? I loved it. I was like, okay, I'm calling her. I mean, it actually got me to call you because I was like, oh my God, she understands. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, and I also try, I really try to bring humor into, the sessions because I yeah. believe it's a diffuser and it will help people to um, be a little more open. So I am, one might say, I have a sarcastic side to me. I mean, you know, and so I bring that in. Yeah. I bring in a little humor and sarcasm. And so that that it puts people at ease. Um, well, the question about, you know, have little or nothing to show for your income is the number one question on that. Um, the other is, you know, do you and your spouse fight, fight about money? Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, it's really interesting. I work with a lot of couples. And I think that anything that works for a couple works for me. I have couples who I have one couple who have been married for 15 plus years. They have three kids together and they have never merged one single bank account. Oh my gosh. They've always kept everything separate huh. and they are totally in love and they have a great relationship and they needed to come to me for a few things to tweak, but that was wow. it. In fact, they don't they I haven't seen them in a while now. Um, but they, um, they, that works. And then I have other couples who maybe keep everything separate, but one person doesn't like it or yeah, they right. put everything together and one person doesn't like it. Yeah. There's a saver and then there's a spender or, you know, there's a, there are a million different things, but if you're constantly fighting with your spouse about money, it is, I, I, I can't even remember the statistics, but it is a very large percentage of people who get divorced, get divorced over money oh, issues. Oh, yeah, I can, I can totally get that. Yeah. Well, there, that's just a couple things. But it, how, do, how can people work with you? Because you obviously, anybody can use the, your advice. You know, I, yeah. I highly recommend, you know, I've never done this before, and I'm so glad I did. Yeah. So people can, can they, they can be anywhere you do Zoom con teleconferencing right. and all that kind of stuff too? Yes, I do. I do. I work with people all over the world, um, English speaking only, unfortunately, but I do work with people anywhere because we can do Zoom conferencing. If they're in the LA area, they can come into my office. Right. Um, but basically what we do is we meet twice a month for an hour, mm -hmm. we can, this is regular ongoing coaching. I have a couple of different things that I do. But for the regular ongoing coaching, we would meet twice a week, twice a month, I'm sorry, for an hour. Now, some people will start out more often and, but usually twice a month is the minimum. That's is the, fine. Yeah. yeah, it works because time goes by so fast. Time goes by. Yeah. And we kind of talk about where they are, where they want to go, and then how to get them there. Um, the, they, it, there's no long-term commitment. So it's not like, oh, well, you have to sign up for my package for like a, a year or three yeah, months or year, six whatever. months or no. whatever. Yeah. I ask people when they start to please give a, a, a commitment, not in writing, but a commitment to this for three months. Cause it yeah. does take three months to it start does. to see yeah. what's going on, but, um, to start to see the results. You have to dig through the, <laughs> yes. the stuff. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but I've had people who have been with me for the whole 10 years and some people are in for three to six months and then they're like, okay, I got it. Thank you. I'm good. Right. And they go. Okay. The other thing that I do is I have what's called a strategy session mm -hmm. and strategy sessions are for people who are really 
self-motivating, but they just kind of don't know which direction to go, what to do. And so we'll come in and it'll be a three hour session. And that usually has to be face to face. If we do a strategy session with somebody who's not local, then I will do an hour and a half and then another hour and a half because it's too much on Zoom to do for for three hours. People yeah, are really, sitting in one way space. Too long, yeah. It's way too long. But we can do 90 and 90. Okay. And we spend the first part, usually broken up pretty evenly, but not always. The first part in the history, in where you are, and how you got there. Mm -hmm. The second part is, what do you want? Where do you want to be at the end of, you know, when you're done with this work, where do you want to be? And then the third part is, okay, let's look at the numbers and let's go through it. And then let's figure out (laughs) different ways (laughs) for you to... Do it. Right. It is scary, but you'll be so much happier. No, People I are totally so agree. Much happier. I agree. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk a little bit more about you, Lisa. Okay. Um, obviously, you are no longer the balance transfer queen, <laughs> but how do you stay of sound mind and body in your personal life? In my personal life? Well, in my financial personal life, I track everything that I spend and earn, everything. My business is tracked separately from my personal, but there is nothing, I would say maybe every month there might be 25 to $50 worth of cash that I don't really know where it went, but it probably went to a lunch or a coffee. Um, but every, everything, mm-hmm. I know everything and I have for 10 years. So I could wow. look back at my records and I could tell you how much I spent on dining out in 2013. Wow. You know, like I, I've got everything. And what that does is it takes me out of my crazy math brain, which can start running numbers and going, well, I've got 75 and then fucked it and then I got to pay that. And then this is what is in the bank, but this client's coming and oh my God, that one canceled and I can just spin. Right. So I don't spin because I write, I put it all into a program. Now, okay. I use MoneyMinder Online, which is the program that Karen McCall developed. That's where I studied. Okay. Um, I tell people they can use anything from a pen and a piece of paper to any program QuickBooks. You know what I mean? Like anything that they want to use, that's what they can use. If they use it. If they use it. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And they have to be able to give me reports. So um, if they do use a pen and a piece of paper, they're going to have to sit down and do some math. But if that's what they want to do, that's fine. And I actually have had clients do that. Um, So that's how I do it in my financial life. Um, In my personal life, I do walk um, three to five times a week. I go yeah. for a walk that's pretty long. Good. You know? Yeah, that's usually nice. like three to five miles if I can. Um, and I don't meditate, and I want to, but I don't. But I do, like I realized a long time ago, like in my 30s, that I need downtime. Right. You know, I just need downtime. I don't care if I'm watching some ridiculous TLC show. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Yes. Like, I don't care. I just need some time to, to not unplug. be doing anything important. Yes. You know, yes. I'm, I'm big on puzzles. Like I do Ooh. the New York Times Sunday crossword puzzles, sometimes some of the others, but I have never done the Saturday. So I'm not even going to pretend on that. <laughs> um, and I, I like, you know, words with friends and like that yes. kind of stuff just takes me out of my stress and it lets me release And hopefully one day soon I'll start meditating. But the thought of sitting still makes me a little nervous. (laughs) You can start someday. I know. I'm on like over 140 days in a row right now. Oh, my gosh. I know. That's genius. It's been this year. So and part of that was resulted in me hiring you. Oh, good. So, um, okay. So favorite sound. My favorite sound is my dog lapping up water. I just love that sound. I have a boxer and she's got a big tongue. And when she goes to drink, I'm like, oh, my God, you're the cutest thing. (laughs) I love her. That's an interesting one. I haven't heard that before. That's great. Okay, so a favorite memory. You know, that one's hard. I think that I have a few. Um, But one of my favorite memories was in college, I did a play. I used to act. And I did this play in college. And I knew at the time it was so good. You know, it was like we were good. And it was good. And everything about it just worked. And everybody worked as a team. And there was – there. I, I'm still friends with my, my college friends to this day. And we just were – 
so together as a unit that and and the play came off amazingly for a college production it was really good and i just remember thinking wow i might never get this quality of work again but it's just such a great memory that i have and i i've done stuff i had done stuff i don't do it anymore but i had done stuff after that but um, I just remember that feeling of like, these are good people, we're doing a good thing, and it's having an impact on the audience. It was and the Diary can, of Anne Frank. So, Oh, cool. Yeah, it and was you can great. remember it forever. I remember it forever. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, favorite place? My favorite place is anywhere that there's water that okay. I can get into. I want the ocean, a pool, a hot tub. Like, if I can get in water, I'm happy. I love it. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, final question. What's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done? <laughs> the most woo-woo thing. This was an easy one. Oh. I did this thing once. I was invited by a friend and um it was it was just it was crazy. You you had to close your eyes and spread out these shells. There were shells and there were some like like a, a hawk's foot or something, <laughs> like all these things. And you had to spread them out on the floor. And then this woman read you your thing about like what, how, you, yeah, she how read they were them. placed. Yeah, it was sort of like reading tea leaves only it, because I closed my eyes and I spread them out completely randomly. Uh-huh. But evidently she got messages from that and read – what was there. Now, the problem was, I didn't realize I was only supposed to do like a little circle. So I had like my arms flailing and I had this big circle, but she couldn't read anything that wasn't inside the circle. And so I got a really bad reading. Well, that must have said something about you, I I would think. I know. know. It probably said this might be a little over my woo-woo limit. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably what it said. But she was lovely and, you know, the experience was interesting. But that was, that was to me the most... That was a pretty woo-woo thing. Woo-woo, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I've yeah. never heard of that before. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. So, Lisa, I can't thank you enough for being with us. This has been oh. such great information. And I really, really recommend that you, uh, that our listeners look you up, Lisa Gould, G O U L D dot com. And just go through those questions. Just take a look at her website. She has just basic information on there. But it is well worth a try because this is something that affects all of us. Thank and you. I'm so glad I, I'm, I have you as my coach now. Oh, and I'm glad to have you. And thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. Thank you. See you soon. Well, that's it for this episode. And thank you so much to Lisa Gould. That was great information for all of us. So how do you stay of sound mind and body in your financial life? Let us know. Send us an email or a voice memo to soundmindbodypodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like the podcast, give us a review on iTunes. It really helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards, and the Inbound Podcasting Network. And thank you so much to our guest today, Lisa Gould. Get in touch. I'm on Instagram at Sound Mind Body Podcast or find us on Facebook or the web. Search for Sound Mind and Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve.